Hi, hello, and 안녕하세요. My name is Lee, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'll actually be reviewing and discussing three separate South Korean queer short films from director Kim Jo Gwang Soo. Boy Meets Boy, released in 2008, Just Friends in 2009, and Love 100 Degrees Celsius in 2010. All appear to be relatively low budget, and the productions are competent and well executed. Although I am grouping the three shorts together, the first two are quite different in tone from the last. Boy Meets Boy is a romantic musical comedy. The short is a dialogue-free meet-cute between a high school student and his former bully aboard a city bus. It premiered at the 13th Pusan International Film Festival in October 2008 had a limited domestic theatrical release in November of that same year, and went on to win countless festival awards. Just Friends is also a romantic musical comedy, but with more dramatic elements. The short follows Sogi, who visits his enlisted boyfriend Minsu, but runs the risk of being caught by Minsu's suspecting Christian mother. As a plus, its cast boasts two stars in the making, Lee Jae-hoon and Yo Won Jin. Just Friends had its world premiere at the 14th Pusan International Film Festival in October 2009, and had a limited domestic theatrical release in December that year. It too went on to collect numerous awards and screen internationally. However, the short was not without homophobia-fueled controversy. More on that later. Boy Meets Boy and Just Friends have the aesthetic and tonal cadence of popular dramas released contemporaneously in the late 2000s and early 2010s, with an added dash of queer campiness, from musical numbers to a drag sequence to an animated segment on gay flirting. Love 100 Degrees Celsius is more of a mature, serious indie short. The drama follows Minsu, a young hearing impaired teen who has both a sexual awakening and a life-changing experience at the local bathhouse. And if this happens to pique your interest, then you may also enjoy Spa Night, the 2016 directorial debut of Andrew Ahn. Similar premise of sexual identity, desire, and the potential homoeroticism of a Korean spa setting, but with the additional lens of Korean American identity. Personally, I'd recommend that as well, and it's available for a small rental fee on Amazon Prime. Back to Kim Jo Gwang Soo. Excepting Boy Meets Boy, the latter two shorts do have degrees of explicit content and potentially triggering material. Just Friends has some sensuality and the complicated emotional reactions to coming out. Love 100 Degrees Celsius has nudity and sexual content, as well as a scene of homophobic violence. Looking at the box office and admission records for each film, according to the business zone of the Korean Film Council, it may very well be the last short's explicitness that earned it both the most limited screening access and lowest turnout. This brings me back to Just Friends. The short was produced in collaboration with Chingusei, the oldest existing gay rights organization in South Korea. The short's title even originates from the name of the organization. Its plot was taken from similar experiences and emotions of Kim Jo himself. But then the theatrical release was scheduled, and the Korean Media Ratings Board had a few thoughts. Namely, that based on the trailer alone, and then the film itself, the short was, quote, harmful to youth and should be given a 19 plus rating to restrict teens from seeing it, citing its supposed, quote, sexual situations that could pose a, quote, risk of imitation. If you follow any queer media, this reeks of the classic think of the children argument, aka the delusion that young viewers copy everything they see in media, and therefore should be shielded from dangerous and deviant behaviors, like non-heteronormative sexualities. That somehow the suggestion of the community's very existence is perverse and a threat. Consequently, the best line of defense is censorship by the rating system, or complete banishment from the screen altogether. This decision was not without criticism from progressive voices, who argued that a double standard on rating sexualities was the prevailing motive of the ratings board. Next thing you know, the film's producers in Chinkusai decide to litigate and leave the decision in the film's classification up to the courts. Bad news, politicians still decried the film as a danger to youth, but in good news, the court sided with the producers and stated the film, quote, provides understanding of and education about minorities and subsequently removed the classification. So, 
why all the controversy on this particular short? The protagonists aren't as youthful as those in Boy Meets Boy, and the content isn't as explicit as in Love 100 Degrees Celsius. In my personal speculation, it could be a combination of factors that sparked this reaction. Director Kim Jo is an openly gay filmmaker, one of the few working in South Korea. Like Lee Song in last week's review, this means that the film itself provides a unique perspective of lived experience. This is not a straight director or writer creating from a distance, a story that they've borrowed or read or contrived or asked a gay friend about. Therefore, the shorts are lent a level of credibility and sincerity that can be universally enjoyed by the audience, but most importantly, speak to the underrepresented gay viewers. The short works hard to integrate queerness into Korean identity. The gay characters live very average lives. They go to school, they walk down the streets and go to cafes, they have parents, and significantly, they complete their mandatory military enlistment. Their existence consists of both their private lives and public ones. There's something to be said for the image of a man in uniform, doing the service all Korean men must within an institution that could prosecute you for your identity and still loving another man. The short is fairly optimistic. While the characters are hesitant to come out and are cautious around military personnel, they have no internal conflict over their sexualities and exhibit no shame. They kiss in public, they desire, love, and support one another. There is even room in the future for acceptance, including from Sogi's Christian mother nonetheless. That's right, being gay, being who you are, and having a future, all represented on screen in a single short film. Minor tangent, but while editing, I realized I hadn't spoken nearly as much to love 100 degrees Celsius. And then I found a recent response to the film, so I thought I'd use this opportunity to talk a little more. This particular response listed a number of issues with the short, and here it is, in a numbered list. They couldn't understand how a trip to a bathhouse could not be sexual, and why people don't shower at home. They questioned whether this indifference to nudity was a cultural difference. If you watch any K-drama, bathhouses, saunas, and spas are common locations for friends and families to go. Similar to the use of face masks and skincare, these places are not necessarily a rare or a luxury service, but are in common use. Some people, depending on their living situation, may very well use the bathhouse as their best option. Now, obviously, the location itself is not inherently sexual, but this short explores its erotic potential, particularly as a same-sex space with a level of bodily freedom. This response actually uses the phrase straight men in these other cultures in a negative connotation as somehow perverted or weird in using bathhouses. As stated above, these are common spaces in Korean culture. Friends, co-workers, parents, and children go. They can wash, scrub their skin, and swim. There are also plenty of men who identify as heterosexual who also enjoy casual sexual encounters with members of the same sex, specifically within the confines of same-sex locations like gyms, locker rooms, saunas, etc. Sexuality is more fluid than a binary. Furthermore, like in the not-so-recent past of the US, societies that are conservative force people to remain closeted, so these kinds of places may be the only option for people who cannot come out or aren't sure about their sexuality. Literally, nothing in this short indicates Minsu is creepy in any way. Having consensual sexual experiences is not inherently creepy. Neither is exploring your sexuality with the resources at your disposal. As to why Minsu's brother is outwardly mean to him is likely due to his disability. Minsu is the elder brother, but due to his deafness, their mother has forced the youngest to take on the Hyung role. This has likely caused resentment since he'd rather be off with his girlfriend than taking his brother to the bathhouse. Siblings can be like that. Now, the overall message is much more open to interpretation. Minsu is a teen largely figuring out what he likes, what feels good, and what he's interested in. His hearing impairment likely marginalizes him, as others are more inclined to infantilize him, that by not being able to talk or hear that he won't be able to articulate his desire. This is 2010, and Minsu has probably never seen gay people on TV or in films, so even finding something to see yourself in or pique your interest is difficult. By the end of the short, he fully understands, through fear, why these desires are hidden and unspoken, that to be outed is to be shamed and hurt and ostracized. It is a short, and Minsu is young, so what his future may hold is ambiguous. 
It's not saying to stay in the closet, but shows the moment when one, without words, discovers the closet for themselves, and that they're already trapped inside. As for the use of Danny Boy, it may be jarring if you don't expect to hear it in a Korean context, but if we translate its popular connotations with youth, specifically male youth, death, coming of age, and melancholy, it doesn't really clash with the short's emotional conclusion. Altogether, the tone across this queer triptych is varied, touching on the cuteness of a first encounter, the adoration of a long-term relationship, and the intoxication of realized desire. The films balance these tones well and do not shy away from the queer, campy, or non-normatively gendered. They allow adversity and trauma, such as outing, harassment, confusion, and fear, to coexist with other emotions and experiences, like desire, satisfaction, curiosity, and love. They neither mock their subjects nor bury them in tragedy. As these are all short films, they aren't readily available on streaming platforms, but they are floating around the internet and YouTube, so please, check them out. Until next time, goodbye, farewell, and 안녕히 계세요.